Hi everyone, it's me, Adrian Lee, the Wandering Art Historian, and I am back with yet another art historical video just for you. That's right, I'm back with another web series. A closer look at Famous Paintings Part 2. That's right, one web series devoted to analyzing famous paintings wasn't enough. So I came back for round two, and I'm so glad that you could join me. You know how much I love to talk with you about art, so let's get to it. Obviously, you're watching me on YouTube as we speak, so you're at least somewhat familiar with the Wandering Art Historian YouTube channel. However, I also have a blog. Yes, that's right. Please be sure to check out the Wandering Art Historian blog, over 400 blog posts full of art historical adventures. I had fun writing them. You're going to have fun reading them. Be sure to check it out. I also teach classes online. Yes, art historical classes via Zoom, no less. And those classes are kind of sort of the inspiration for part two of A Closer Look at Famous Paintings. All of the artwork discussed in this web series are included in my classes. So if you've taken a class with me, this might be a little bit of a refresher. And if you've never taken a class with me, consider this like a, 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 a bite-sized hors d'oeuvre of some of that art historical deliciousness that you would get out of one of my classes. Yeah, the class that inspired this particular video, Modern Art Madness, you may recall from a previous video um, that I also taught Modern Art Madness Volume 2. That's right, it takes two volumes at least to scratch the surface of the craziness of modern art. And who will we be discussing today? What famous artwork will, be, will we be diving into? <laughs> oh man, get ready. Today, we're gonna talk about Salvador Dali's epic painting, Geopoliticus Child, Watching the Birth of the New Man from 1943. Buckle up everybody, because it's gonna be a crazy ride. Are you ready? Okay, the first thing I want to point out to you is this crazy title, okay? Salvador Dali was not afraid to just make up words if the right one didn't exist. And we're not always 100% sure exactly what he means, but we're going to use this painting to provide all of the clues because I'm pretty sure he's got something to say. It's Salvador Dali. And speaking of Dali, you may remember our video on Rene Magritte, where I talked about him being the silent or the sneaky surrealist. Do you remember that? And how we, we talked about how he was fascinated with language and with words and what do those words mean and what are those implications and how are words different from images and what happens when you put them together and all that cool stuff. And we, we emphasize the fact that his imagery is, is a little bit more covert. His, his challenging thoughts and concepts were, were a little bit undercover, right? He was kind of just sneaking them in there, right? And we also acknowledge that Salvador Dali is the exact opposite, right? Dali is obsessed with dream study. He's obsessed with psychoanalysis and his hero is Sigmund Freud, all right? Already very different. Plus, Dali's challenging imagery is very overt. It is very in your face. Sometimes you look at a Dali painting and you're like, yikes, this is the thing of nightmares. And, and this painting is a little bit challenging, but it's actually one of my favorite Dali paintings. So we're going to take a closer look. We're going to dive into this painting and we're going to see what's really going on here. Are you ready? Oh man, let's go. All right, where do we begin, right? When you look at a painting like this, you're like, oh my gosh, it's sensory overload. How do I read a painting like this? Where do I even start? So let's start with basics. 
it looks like the events of this painting are taking place out of doors in nature where we're not 100 percent sure but we do see mountains in the background it could be sunrise it could be sunset not 100 percent sure but my suggestion is that this takes place in Figuera, Spain, which is where Salvador Dali was from, because that location has the Pyrenees to the north and the Mediterranean Sea to the east. And what's interesting about Dali's paintings is that we often see mountains or cliffs and bodies of water in his paintings that kind of suggest, hey, Maybe this takes place in Figuera, Spain. Plus, because this is surrealism, it takes place and not an accurate interpretation of Figuera, Spain. Do you know what I mean? Salvador Dali said this, quote, Spain is the most irrational and mystical country in the world. So I interpret that as being his paintings take place in a mystical, magical version of Figueres, Spain, okay? In fact, he called his paintings, quote, hand-painted dream photographs. All right, that's a lot to digest, but that suggests that some of these images are popping up in his dreams and he's just putting them on canvas. So that's a lot to take in, right? So this could be his dream mystical version of Spain. Okay, so let's start with that. What else is going on here? Well, the big thing right in the center of this painting is what looks like a globe that also kind of looks like an egg. Do you notice that it's not perfectly spherical? Do you notice it looks kind of pliable, right? Okay, and it's kind of stretching to accommodate something. And that something is this figure, a human figure that seems to be hatching or coming out of this globe egg, right? You see that right in the center of the painting. Um, pointing out this interesting thing, you can't, you can't forget anything. Um, do you notice that there's a piece of cloth under the globe egg and one over top of it? And to me, I love this idea of like presentation, right? It's almost like the the ta-da moment of the magician at the end of the the magic trick right the the curtain has been lifted or the the cloth has been removed to reveal this globe egg and the events taking place okay um what else do you notice there are some figures to the far right of this painting and i gotta say it kind of looks like a woman a female figure, although she's, it's kind of a paradox, right? She's both emaciated, but also muscular at the same time. Her hair is kind of pulled back. And do you notice that she points to the globe egg, but that her, her face is turned down and her eyes are closed. She does not look at the globe egg. I think that's very interesting, okay? There is a baby at her feet, is the baby male or female? We don't know. We don't know. Um, but it's the baby that seems to be watching the events taking place in the globe egg, right? Which would imply then that the baby is the geopoliticus child of the title. Okay. That's a lot to take in. I get it. It's in the details that I think we're gonna fine tune our interpretation. So let's look at some of those details. The first one, do you notice that the globe egg is cracked in half and that the figure seems to be coming out of the globe egg where the Northern Hemisphere would be located, that North American continent. Do you notice, do you see that right there? Yes, very interesting. Um, is this a uh, human figure male or female? I don't know. Uh, it has kind of some muscular arms that might suggest that it is male, but we are not 100% sure. Do you notice that there is this red thing? It's almost, 
there's only a little tiny bit of red in this painting and part of it is this blood placenta yolk thing that seems to be coming from the crack in the globe egg yeah right kind of creepy kind of like what the heck is going on here okay the figure on the far right do you do you notice what she is pointing to on the globe egg if you follow her arm and to the tip of her finger it looks as though she is pointing to the continent of Europe the continent of Europe and the last little thing I want to the detail that we have to take into consideration is the date the date of this the completion of this painting 1943 what is going on in the world in 1943 are you starting to connect those dots that's what I thought yes you are of course so what's going on in the world at this time Salvador Dali and his wife Gala have fled Europe they are now residing in the United States of America why is that World War II is raging in Europe could this painting be a commentary on the horrors of war we see an emaciated figure uh, we we're in this unusual landscape that seems almost like a desert or an empty plain we don't know we don't know is this Dolly's suggestion or implication that a power shift is taking place in the world maybe because it could suggest that Europe is no longer the center of the so-called modern world or the Western world in fact the fact that this new man is coming out of the crack in this globe egg where North America would be kind of suggests that this new man is um, no not European but North American and I, that's got a lot of implications to it and do you notice that this figure the foot would be in the Pacific Ocean and the arm reaches into the Atlantic Ocean suggesting the reach of this new man this North American new man reaches from Pacific to Atlantic that there's a lot of implications there there's a lot of suggestions there and honestly I don't know if they're all good there is something kind of ominous there's something very uncertain speculative about this painting what does the future hold and I think it all goes back to that geopoliticus child in the far right corner where if you think about it maybe what Dali is saying is that there is a shift in power from Europe to North America and that this geopoliticus child this little baby is witnessing this transfer of power and will grow up in a world where Europe is not the focus or the center of the modern world but a world in which North America actually is for better or for worse there's a lot to take in there and I want you to ponder this and let it seep into your subconscious because that's what Dali would do you might even have a dream or a nightmare about this painting but either way take in the fact that this painting has a Dali has a lot to say and he's doing that with this one painting it's very profound and just keep thinking about it and pondering what it means to you because it's art baby art is subjective we bring our own experiences to each work of art and that helps us inform our own interpretations ah oh, thank you for taking a closer look at this painting with me I have so enjoyed going on this journey with you taking a closer look at famous paintings part two and I hope you've had fun as well if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like it don't forget to leave me a comment share your thoughts with me share your interpretations of this painting in the comments I would love to read them and definitely share this video 
with someone you know who is interested in learning a little bit more about art history. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the Wandering Art Historian YouTube channel. channel. And thank you so, so much for joining me for all of these videos. I'm having a blast. I hope you are too. My name is Adrian Lee. You know me as the Wandering Art Historian. I'm so grateful that you watched today. I'll see you next time. Bye.